What's up? Are you ready for some epic game development? I'm back, baby. I'm pretty sure I already missed my brother's birthday. I gave up working on that project. Very sad. But at least I'm no longer conflicted. And no longer have to worry about the fact that I'm uh, working on two projects at once. Because now I'm back just working on one. That game will just be on the back burner. Just like every other uh, projects I have so far. I want to spend all of my time in SAD. This is for my honor. Oh, hello there. Holy shit, how long have you have I been reading this? I'm sorry. Oh god, I don't deserve the kiss. Like literally, I made you wait for that. No, I am gonna do it soon. Yeah, yeah, I know. Happy Valentine's Day to you too. Oh my god, holy shit! I wanted to tell you something. I never made anything anyone for Valentine's Day. But well, here's just a hug instead. I sorry. Were you putting on lipstick? Oh god. <laughs> I ruined it. Uh, what a date what a way to start this video Jesus please don't please wear something else Monica YouTube will fuck will probably fucking delete this video don't if I let you stay in that for too long that'll do for now
been such a long time since I last worked on this, I've kind of forgotten. This is why I like to work on things daily. Because even just two days of being out of the flow completely breaks my uh, flow. So to speak, I've forgotten everything. I need to... I need to see my game dev notes, if I can find them. Let's get some tunes going. I had a song in mind I wanted to play, but I've forgotten. Yarg, what is it? Mm. 
Hey, thanks for reminding me about fucking Valentine's Day, and by the way. Oh shit, I didn't plan- I didn't mean to close it. I was gonna look up a tutorial. It's very important. Hello everybody and welcome to part two of my little two-part music tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at audio groups. my notes be you can't see them but I have notes they're physical notes not digital notes I prefer writing my notes physically rather than digitally you see not everything can be solved through digital implements alone sometimes the good old pen and paper works best. There's probably a few young on game developers here watching this for some reason. It's probably just the old man and me, but I prefer 
I prefer using older implements when writing notes for this kind of stuff. If everything's just digital, it, it, I, I don't know. There's just something about it that happens to me psychologically. I don't like it. If you can work with it by having everything just be digital, your notes, your writing, your code, everything is inside your computer, then more power to you. I got nothing against that. I'm simply saying this is how I do things. If you want to do things my way, uh, then go ahead. But if you don't want to do things my way, then go ahead. You don't need to complain about it. You don't need to criticize it. It's my life. And it's your life. You should criticize things that should be criticized. Just like uh, food. Or works of art like games. And, uh, and film. Not someone's fucking way of life. It's efficient anyway. For now. So all, to all you like dungeon masters out there that are like using World Anvil, go ahead. I don't give a fuck if you're using World Anvil or using computers on your Dungeons and Dragons game because you're going all modern and digital. Uh, I'll prefer I prefer playing my Dungeons and Dragons with pen and paper still. Thank you very much. Shit, I feel conflicted. I got multiple things I want to do at once. I want to slack off some more, just like Kaguya, and play some more Merry Skelter. Maybe I can work and play Merry Skelter at the same time. But while I'm doing that, I need to... Ah, gotta download, but I also gotta look at my notes. Which one should I do first? Ah! Both of them are a pain to do. My mindset for work is rather different. You see, I prioritize fun over anything else. The average person, one without motives or dreams, prioritize the easy work before the hard work. But as for me, easy or hard, as long as it is fun, it is what takes priority. Now then. Finding a bunch of stupid notes and waiting an hour or so for a, for a download to finish. Technically, they are incredibly easy, but they are very boring as well. Not fun. Then again, I guess that is objectively just not fun for anyone, huh? So now I just sound like a fucking idiot. And uh, a bit of an elitist. I 
found my notes. It's all Gucci now. fine and dandy. These are my stage notes, but uh, I'm kind of already done with the stages. Where the hell? Ah uh, yes, this song gives me courage and bolsters me to work even harder and try searching again. Yeehaw, mister. They must be over here. could escape my wrath. You guys can see the time. I sound like a fucking madman right now. And frankly, I'm pretty sure at this point, I am. There comes a point where you're no longer just sounding like one. Where you are no longer merely imitating it, but rather you are it. Well, how did the saying go again? The, you have fought so many monsters, you have become a monster yourself?
natin. Once I have this demo finished, the rest of the game is actually gonna be pretty much just smooth sailing. I'm still gonna have to work on the main menu and the shops and other things I plan to have for this game. But uh, pretty much the stage making is just smooth sailing. Because I have a good template to work off now, or as I like to call it, my engine. It's pretty much uh, complete. And I don't need to worry about doing things because uh, I've simplified the programming process for every for this for stage sections can get a get co a bit complex if I'm stepping out of my comfort zone but at the very least I'm it's not happening all the time All oh, right, I don't keep them here, huh? I keep them on my phone. All my plans and ambitions for this game, I've literally forgotten. Which is why I'm so thankful I keep notes now. God, this sub this is so outdated. I've already fixed some of these, so now I gotta take the time to check out which one which of these notes is outdated and which one is not. why I was considering setting up a face cam. So you guys can see just how much time I'm actually spending away from keyboard. Jesus Christ, you scared me, yeah. It'll be done by lunchtime tomorrow. Estimatedly, of course, assuming nothing bad happens. Alright. Hmm. Here they are. Look at all these notes. If only you can see them. Which you can, which is probably for the best because these things are all cringy. Alright, all the memories flowing back through me, baby. Now I'm all inspired to get back to work, baby.
Alright, if I remember correctly, I wanted to learn how to make fading out of the music. That's what I was gonna do. So let's see. If I remember, I also kind of want my warning sign to be way better. Right now, it's just a draw text, if I remember correctly. This ain't good, chief. This will not do. Groups and volume management, so how to manage uh, the volume of a group of sounds, um, so like your music separate from your sound effects and so on, it's quite a useful thing to be able to do. So what are audio groups? Um, audio groups are something you can access through the tools menu, uh, if you go to audio groups it'll bring up, and uh, by default in your project if you have a bunch of sounds, this group will probably be full of stuff, it's audio group underscore default. Um, that group gets loaded into memory automatically whenever you run your game. Um, that's why you're able to just put a sound into your game and then just play it with audio play sound. Um, normally though, if you have your sound in a specific audio group, so I have two, I've named them AG Music and uh, AG SFX for sound effects. Um, if you have a specific audio group for specific sounds, you have to load them in manually, okay? That's cool because it allows you to control exactly what's in memory at any given time so you don't just have every sound that you have in your game loaded into memory at once because you know sounds can actually get pretty beefy in file size so um, it's worth keeping control over what's loaded when. But that's not the only advantage to audio groups and the main thing that we're going to be looking at today is that what you can do is you can actually manipulate the gain uh, that's the volume of an entire audio group so you can uh, set the volume of like all of your sound effects and all of your music and whatever are the various categories of sounds that you have. Okay, that's really useful. You know most commercial games give you the option to change the, uh, the volume of, say, your music and your dialogue and your sound effects, and this is a way that you can do that. So I've assigned my various sounds here, my four music tracks, into this audio group just via this audio group's menu, which you can do just by clicking Add Resource and pick one to add, um, and it'll put it in and the same for my sound effects, but you can also add them from the sound editor itself. So if I go to any given one of these, so M Mountain for example, um, uh, this music track you could just uh, see audio group at the bottom, it's just got a drop down menu, you can just select which audio group you want to put it in. To actually create a new audio group though you have to use this, this menu up here, okay? So as I said, when you put stuff in specific audio groups other than uh, your audio group underscore default, um, you have to you have to load those in manually before you're able to actually play those sound effects. You can do other things with them, like you can set a gain and stuff like that, but you can't play a sound effect unless it, or a music track unless it's actually loaded into memory. So how on earth do we do that? Well, if I go to my own music object that I've got set up, just kind of handling everything in this part. In the create event, I just simply use this line here, audio underscore group underscore load, and then the name of the audio group. You see audio group shows up red, Game Maker recognizes it as a thing. Um, but that doesn't happen instantly, so you can't just do this and then instantly run like audio sound play underneath, okay? That won't work. Or audio play sound, I think it is. <laughs> um, because uh, you don't know when this is actually going to finish or how long it's going to finish, and it happens asynchronously, that means just like not at the same time as the rest of your game, okay? Um, so how do we know when this is finished? Well, when uh, an audio group finishes loading, it triggers an event, okay? It triggers one of these. Um, and it's called the async save load event. So asynchronous 
uh, save load this one here okay and you see I've got that added here with the description sounds loaded and I check to see because I, I when this events triggered I don't know if it's because of this audio group loading or this audio group loading or maybe something else using that async event right so I have to check to see still if the audio group itself is loaded when this event got triggered and if it is do whatever I want to do so if my music is loaded I actually start playing um, a track based on music playing I've got a little variable system and some arrays set up to sort of control the four tracks and crossfade between them and I set control to be true, which is a variable I use to control whether or not I change. Uh, I can ch I can change volume, and we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, for sound effects, I just set a variable so that I know uh, I can check later whenever I want to play sound effects to make sure that they're actually loaded in memory before trying to. Okay, simple as that. So for setting this up, I actually have a volume slider. Um, I have a couple of these that I that's literally just got my face on them, and I, I just use them to drag, uh, drag a button around on a bar. How I do all that stuff and like dragging it back and forth isn't too important to this video. Um, if you're one of my Patreon supporters, you'll get the source code for this, so you'll be able to kind of look at that if it's interesting to you. But I haven't coded that super well or specifically for this tutorial. Um, the main thing that's important is here. Okay. Um, so based on my, the X position of this, this handle on a bar, which you'll see in a minute, it's just like a little button on a bar that I drag back and forth to change volume. Um, with O music, uh, I set music volume, a specific variable for how loud I want uh, any music playing to be, to be a thing based on the X position of this. So, okay, so that's just setting uh, a variable called music volume, and then I use that variable to do audio group set gain. Okay, and this works exactly like uh, the audio sound get set gain, or, or um, audio sound gain rather, in that you can set a specific volume and also set it over a specific point in time, uh, or a specific a specific amount of time. Sorry, so you can fade it if you really wanted to. But um, here I'm just setting it immediately um, to whatever volume it, it needs to be. Okay, um, so let's see how that actually works, shall we? So if I run the game. Uh, you can hear music already playing. And now if I drag my face down here, that's gone really quiet. I don't know if you'll even be able to hear it in the video still now. But you can see down here, look where I could, I'm could. i showing the gain of all of these different sound effects. Um, you can see all of the music ones that are in uh, the audio group AG Music have all had their gain changed to 0 0.10. Okay? And I've got a sound effects one here because I can play random sound effects. Those are all just sounds from random Ludendari games, uh, but I can also change that. I don't know if you can even still hear those. But you get the idea, right? Okay. Um, so what I can also do in this game is I can crossfade between my tracks. So if I press space, um, you can see the game's changing there. And you'll notice I turn everything grey while I'm doing that, because um, an important thing to note is that uh, when I'm changing the gain of the audio group, that's not a very I'm not changing a variable specific to the audio group, I'm actually just changing the gain of every sound that's inside it. Okay, so that will overwrite... let me turn this down. So that will overwrite um, any gain changes that you've done um, other than that, okay? So if uh, you've, you've faded a sound out to zero or whatever, um, and then you set it using music volume to 0.2 or whatever, that's going to set everything. So what you've got to do is be careful to make sure you stop playing sounds when you're crossfading between them, okay? So you'll notice when I crossfade, if I turn this back up, um, watch what happens. So I'm on M Puzzle, and I want to go to M Mountain. So that might have been difficult to spot, I don't know. But what I did is essentially uh, I set my gains to whatever they should have been, so M Puzzle was the one that was playing. Um, so I told that to fade towards zero, and I told M Mountain to fade uh, to to set itself to zero, and then start playing and fade itself to the given volume. Okay, because otherwise its gain was already at whatever volume, right? They're all at that. Um, and then when I when I was finished with that, um, uh, I gave control back to the player because then all will be at the the correct gain again. Okay, when when M Puzzle hits zero, I stop it playing anymore. Okay. Um, so you can't do that thing that I showed in the, the previous um, tutorial where uh, you play 
two music tracks at once and just use their gain to decide kind of whether or not they're People playing or really, not. Okay? Really if you're going to set volume using well. audio groups, um, then you want to make sure that uh, you're really only playing the one track at a time. If you need uh, tracks to still be in sync and you wanted to accomplish that, there's a thing called audio sync groups that will allow you to do that. I may or may not explore that in another tutorial at a later date. Um, but that allows you to have multiple tracks that play and stay in sync all the time, but you can like pause and stop and move between them and so on, so you can still use this sort of system. Okay? So just in case you didn't understand any of what I just said about uh, controlling the, the, the gain and, and uh, making it so you can't change the volume while you're fading between tracks, because if, if I was able to do that while in the middle of fading track, that would interrupt everything, so that's why I lock it out. You'd want to avoid the player ever being able to do that, so if you're in the middle of a crossfade or something like that, you probably don't want the player to be able to pause the game, go to the menu and change music volume, because that'll screw things up. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a thing to bear in mind, but let's just take a look at how exactly that works. So if I go to music now and go to, um, I think, the step event, yeah. So down here where I just have keyboard check, press space, um, so when you press the space bar to do a crossfade, here's what I do. So I set it so you can't, I take control to false and that's what allows me to actually change the volume with the sliders. Um, so if that's...
not true, then I can't do any uh, any volume changing. Um, I, I find the, the track that I want to move to, um, then I say, so I told that to fade towards zero, and I told M Mountain to fade, uh, to, to set itself to zero, and then start playing and fade itself to the given volume, okay? Because otherwise its gain was already at whatever volume, right? They were all at that. Um, and then when I when I was finished with that, um, uh, I gave control back to the player because then they'll all be at the, the correct gain again, okay? When when M puzzle hits zero, I stop it playing anymore, okay? Um, so you can't do that thing that I showed in the, the previous um, tutorial where uh, you play two music tracks at once and just use their gain to decide kind of whether or not they're playing or not, okay? If you're going to set volume using audio groups, um, then you want to make sure that uh, you're really only playing the one track at a time. If you need uh, tracks to still be in sync and you wanted to accomplish that, there's a thing called audio sync groups that will allow you to do that. May or may not explore that in another tutorial at a later date, uh, but that allows you to have multiple tracks that play and stay in sync all the time, but you can like pause and stop and move between them and so on, so you can still use this sort of system. Okay? So just in case you didn't understand any of what I just said about uh, controlling the, the, the gain and, and uh, making it so you can't change the volume while you're fading between tracks, because if, if I was able to do that while in the middle of fading track, that would interrupt everything, so that's why I lock it out. And you'd want to avoid the player ever being able to do that, so if you're in the middle of a crossfade or something like that, you probably don't want the player to be able to pause the game, go to the menu and change music volume, because that'll screw things up. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a thing to bear in mind, but let's just take a look at how exactly that works. So if I go to music now and go to, um, I think, the step event, yeah. So down here where I just have keyboard check, press space, um, it's when you press the space bar to do a crossfade, here's what I do. So I set it so you can't, I set control to false and that's what allows me to actually change the volume with the sliders. Um, so if that's not true then I can't do any, uh, any volume changing. Um, I, I find the, the track that I want to move to. Um, then I set that track playing, uh, I set its gain to be zero. In theory I should probably do that the other way around, but it happens so instantaneously you're, you're never going to actually hear a bit of it and then and then have it fade to zero, I don't think, right? Um, uh, then I tell it to fade from zero to the target music volume, whatever our current music volume is, and then I tell music playing, our current mu playing track, to fade towards zero, okay?
glass and not cobblestone because I think if there was enough moisture, we'd have a glass tube. We can make sure there aren't any issues with the bubble column at all without just getting stuck there or something. Maybe getting some villagers stuck in there would be probably even worse. So I think what I'm going to do is trade with my villagers until I have enough uh, trade open with the librarian that I can trade glass from my villagers. Because while the husk farm is kind of a good idea to have, as far as the sand goes, it is unfortunately a little bit slow. And once I can trade glass freely with that librarian, we will have access to a whole lot of glass. Right now, I've got myself five emeralds and a few books because I was able to trade myself a few more mending books off camera. Then we have fine ways to have food and armor once I've got the enchantments that I want. But for now, I think the best thing to do is really going to be trading melons with that farmer. I've only got a couple of those grown right now. We can probably harvest a few more of these crops. But yeah, I think I'll probably spend a little bit of time putting together a melon farm. And that way, the melons will just be auto harvested in the background. We can trade with the farmer basically whenever we want. And while we don't have the luxury of being able to go really hop on minecart route yet and do a more advanced farm, I think it should be simple enough. No, not a minecart. I don't want a minecart. I want a hopper. There we go. <laughs> Almost clicked on the minecart by mistake because I was talking about minecarts. I think it should be easy enough for us to set up an automatic melon farm over here and just have the melons pushed into a water stream. We are going to lose a few items in the process, but considering they're being made automatically, it's not going to be the biggest of deals. There's still some coarse dirt to grow. Just need a couple of redstone containers for this. We could go the observer route if we wanted to, and I think that's probably going to work out for the best. You know what? I think I'm going to build the platform out with a little bit more natural stone. I'm kind of tired of looking at cobblestone at this point, and ultimately I want to naturalize the landscape. Cobblestone doesn't really occur naturally except where lava and water meet, so I think I'm probably going to start using regular stone from now on. I think it'll take a while to smelt it, maybe I could probably add another stack or two of cobblestone to the furnaces nearby. So in order to make our melon farm, we're going to have a strip of dirt, and some of this is going to be home in just a second. We will probably want to put a barrier of jungle plants on this side here, just to make sure that we have a nice easy water channel. And I think at the end here, we're going to be placing our hopper, placing outwards into an output chest there. We can probably manage to alternate like so, so that we make sure we have yeah, a bit of farmland in between each of those. Water bucket can go here. Put our output chest there, we'll put our hopper there, and some sort of stair block or something, or a trapdoor on top of it, just to make sure that the items don't overflow and end up despawning on the chest. There we go, trapdoor on the end, nice and easy. Hopefully all of this water should be hydrating the farmland as required, and in those farmland spots we can start to plant our melon stalks. Remember that melons will need a solid block of dirt, grass, or farmland on either side of the stalk to grow the melon in the first place, and we're going to be detecting the melon in the middle with an observer, which I guess I will have to craft out of some of the quartz I've been getting from blazes. I've only got enough for one observer right now. Is it two redstone and one quartz? Yeah, I need to get the observer. There we go, two redstone and one quartz it is, so I actually have enough to craft three, which is almost all I need. I should need four for this, so yeah, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now let's grab these melons which have just spawned, let's actually break those down. Oh, I guess you can't uncraft melon, can you? Just punch it with my fist then, and we can turn the melon slices into melon seeds, which we get three of as well. So that will work for the first three observers. Let's bone meal these stalks so they are fully grown, and at that point, the observer is now going to be detecting the change in state when the stalk bends over to attach to a melon that grows inside of it, and that's going to fire the pistons, much like it did in our original melon and pumpkin farm that we built in the survival boat. We're not going to do the advanced one quite yet, unfortunately. And the way we want to orient this is to have a flag behind each of these observers. So we're going to place one there, one there, and one there. And one block down, we place planks behind each of these pistons so that each of those can have a single dot of redstone dust on it. And now, any time that the observer receives a signal, which it should have done, Yep, there we go. <laughs> yes, it actually fires at the pistons on both sides of the observer, but hopefully that should mean that there will be a melon caught in front of it. And that is going to break the melon down into slices, so it's slightly less efficient than manually harvesting these with silk touch, but it's all going to happen automatically in the background, which is going to make it a lot easier for me. I'm still going to keep the manual farm here, of course, because we've got a silk touch axe. We can get those melons nice and easily, and the more the merrier at this point. I don't have enough redstone components to make this farm particularly large, at the current time, but you know, we can always double up on the pistons on this opposite side here when we have a chance. So I'm just going to quickly hop through to the nether, get myself a few more pieces of quartz from the blazes, and hopefully we should be able to finish off this little melon farm before we do anything else. 
And there we go, folks. The melon farm is complete. Waiting for it to fire for the first time. I did throw a couple. Turtle shell helmet has proved its use. Excellent stuff. We are now a 
able to turn this entire thing into a bubble pull-up. Brilliant. Now here is an interesting question. Do waterlogged slabs still break your fall in the same way that regular water does? And am I keen to give that a try right now? Not really. <laughs> I kind of want to see if that works, but I'm not going to worry about it now. Instead, I'm going to build up the area around here. I realized I couldn't place blocks any lower than this, of course, because we're at the level of the void, so I think I might hedge my bets and just create a water puddle here. There we go. That should be enough, but I may as well grab a water source from one of these as well. Oh, you know what? We could break this. We could create our bubble column now, and then I'll head up to the surface and grab myself some water sources from there. Soul sand block going in. This is now a bubble column, and whoosh, yes, all the way back up to the surface at lightning speed, much, much faster than climbing a ladder, and we can collect all of the kelp up here at the top. So let's grab another water source from here and take the plunge. We have to make sure I avoid landing on that block to the left, because that could be a little bit of fall damage, and oh, heart in mouth, but we have made it. There we go, folks. All right, let's turn this into a proper three by three of water sources, and maybe I'll go into a test world, or maybe I'll set up something here in the Skyblock world where I can test the waterlogged slabs. But for now, water sources in this little pool is going to be good enough for me. And just because we now have a water elevator to this surface island doesn't mean we can't take that water elevator a little bit further. My idea to get the villagers up to this area and to have them drop into the iron farm is going to be to extend this upwards a few, uh, you know, about a thousand blocks or so, and then have them go along water streams up here. The idea being that, of course, we can direct them to wherever we want them to go using water streams without having to worry about the hassle of transporting these in floats. Alright, it worked. And also, it's time for me to sleep.